Okay, we're back. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. We will eventually finish this book. I'm not sure how many of you are actually coloring along, but there's a lot to do. So last week we did hair, or last time, not last week. Um, today, I want to actually move my coffee mug. Yeah, from the Crayola store. I think you can buy it online. I'm not sure, but it's the Crayola Experience. We went to their store like three or four years ago, and so I was able to get that, and I love it. All right, we're going to look at this frog. Now, I guess first we need to look at the page, because I know some of you like to actually follow, but do you see how dark everything is on there? I mean, to me, it's just not fun and bright. And I think of Alice as a book of possibilities. Um, so I'm going to change it up. Like I said, you know, you're, you're the colorist here. You get to decide what you're doing. So I'm going to change things up for this little frog. And I had actually thought about doing the feet in this salmon color. And then the more I look at it, I'm just like, oh, I'm not quite that daring. So I'm going to put that to the side. I'm not going to use that. Let's see. Get him all the way in. And then if I don't move it, I can actually have a seat and color. So the pencils I pulled... I decided to go with some long pencils that aren't used much. You know, these I had to go ahead and put in extensions because they're really getting short now. And so, oh, while I'm talking about pencils being short, I want to show you what I did in my book. So let me stand back up. <laughs> um, right here where that green goes that is getting short, I labeled palm leaf. That's the color of the shortest one. And I slid it in there because as I sharpen that pencil, the name is actually gonna get sharpened right off of it. And I'm not going to be able to read it. In fact, that's all that's left on it right now is the EAF on palm leaf. So I went ahead and did that so that it would um, be labeled and put it in the slot for it. That way I'll know to look for it somewhere else. All right, so here we go. Y'all ready? Try this again. I'm using shamrock. Again, these are all Crayola, doing green, and then I pulled pine green. May or may not stick with these, I don't know, we'll see. So as before, the lightest areas are gonna get my lightest color. This is almost like a grayscale page right here. This frog is. If you've ever done a grayscale book, it's a lot like this. If you've not done grayscale, this is how I do grayscale. So I am going into the dark spots. I'm not really going to keep extra care on staying out of it because it's all going to get colored. And this is his fingers and I've decided to go ahead and do those this color also. I mean, you could do your frog in shades of purple. It doesn't matter. Okay. I just didn't go purple because we've got water here and it's going to be more blue. And I may use a blue purple for it. I'm not real sure yet. So that's why I didn't go ahead and do purples and stuff like that on this. But anyway. Just get your base coat down. Okay. 
So is it warm where y'all are? Yeah, it's um, it's been warm here. I actually, it's like 98, 99, something like that today. Um, we've not gotten rain in a few days. So I've been having to go out and water the hydrangeas and things like that every day. But um, yeah, we don't water a whole lot. You might could lose a small child in the cracks in our yard. Not really, but you know what I'm saying. I just, we don't, we're just not those people that have the immaculate lawn. Would I like it to be? Oh yeah, why not? It'd be awesome to have a really nice yard. But it's just so hot out. Now I think this is the eye. So I'm going to go around that. Actually, are these the eyes? I don't know. I should have looked it up. You know what? We can look it up because we can look here. And what does it show? Hmm. The picture is little bitty. And I really can't tell, but they did color it. So I guess I'll be coloring it. Yeah, they did not leave that white for an eye. Hmm. Not real sure. I'm going to pretend that's the eye and just go ahead and color all this. And then part of me says, should I stop and look it up online? So that's where my head goes to when I'm coloring. Sometimes I think I have to stop and research. Sometimes I just color. You know, I could have looked up Spotted Frog and seen what images were out there. And that might have helped me know other colors that would have been kind of cool to do this in. Don't know. Could have done a different color ring around those spots. Like I said, I just didn't want to get too wild with it. And this is really kind of the sloppy copy. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm looking to see on my phone... And then I will be back, maybe, if I can figure out how to do this. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I know that didn't seem, but no time at all for y'all, but it was a while for me. So, I researched, and let me tell you what I found out. So that is not an eye. That is just another spot. This is the eye on the outside of each of these. But this right here, that black line, that's the actual eyelid or the eyeball. This is the eyelid. Oh my goodness. Like I said, sometimes we just get stuck in research mode and just have to know. So I'd rather look and know than to come back later and go, oh, I was supposed to draw a circle in that and it was an eyeball. So this is actually the eyelid. Here's his hand. And then that slit is the black of his eyeball this would be his nose. So, there you have it. All right, so that was Shamrock. Now I'm going to regular old green. This regular old green, now I'll be a little bit more careful. I'm going to use this in the areas to blend into the lighter parts. Does that make sense? 
So like I won't go down there because it's already lighter, but I can pop this in on this side and then blend it. Do it here just a little bit, blend up in, blend down the lighter area on the spots. Okay, I don't know why, I think I'm talking softer sometimes on these videos. If so, my apologies. All right, so anywhere where it's a slightly shadowed or slightly um, little drawn lines, that's where I'm gonna hit with this green. So like here, and then just blending in to that other green. On this side, blending in. It's not hard, it's time consuming. So that's the only thing. But as with grayscale, this frog should be pretty cool looking by the time we're done with him. If you've never done a grayscale book, um, Jane Mayday, Mayday has awesome grayscale books. I would suggest hers. Um, lovely cutesy pictures and animals, just um, flowers, different things. I think I've done some reviews of a couple of her books. You can look through my channel and bring that up. She's just a delightful artist and um, her work is just, it's really nice. I really like her books. So if you want a suggestion for a grayscale book, I would go with her. Um, yeah, there's others out there, but hers is the one that just pops to my brain first thing. So, all right, still just moving around, getting what's the middle tone, so to speak, or the middle value. I'm not going to the darkest, and I'm trying to kind of leave the lightest alone, and doing that, which is a little bit in between. And again, if you don't care if your frog looks more three-dimensional, do it one color. There are no coloring police in my video land. Yep, just enjoy the coloring. Get lost in it. Want that to look webbed. All right, so you're already seeing how this looks a lot more realistic and dimensional. So now I would go over and do the other side the same way. Use the dark as um, a last color to put in. Right now we're doing the medium one. And where they overlap, I blend them just a little. I don't have to go crazy with it. All those lines are going to help it to blend some. That's why I say this reminds me so much of a grayscale. Because there are so many shading lines in here. Yeah, now that I'm doing him, I really kind of wish I had done him in a fun color. There's part of his foot sticking out, I think. But that's all right. This green's going to be kind of cool. 
All right, so then once you get your second done all over, stand up, make sure I'm still in. I am still in. Woohoo! <sighs> Sometimes it's the little things, but being on camera is a big thing when you're trying to show something. Now, I have grabbed pine green. I'm going in my deepest areas, so I want this webbing to look like it's pushed back under there. So I'm going to get it dark there and then come out lighter. A little bit of dark back in here. And then I'm going to go over all these dark areas. I could use black and that would really pop, which is a good thing. But um, I don't know, I think I just want to keep it with the greens. Maybe that's something I should have looked up. <laughs> oh, goodness. See, I'm going to come through here where it's darker. And I'm going to go darker also. See how that made it look more rounded by putting that dark in there? So if I want this to look more rounded, I'm going to put more dark in here and then just come up to the light. Same thing here. Put a little bit of dark in there. And if I make it dark, dark right through the middle, it should make it look like it's actually going down in. Okay, I can do the same thing over here. Put dark here and then fade it some so that that's pushed down underneath then come through here and come up now that leg looks more rounded on each side of this striped area And then let that just pop out. And I'm going to go ahead and do that little line there. Now, see how these are getting lighter? Except right here it's dark, and then it gets lighter. So just barely go over that lighter area. And then over where it's dark. So keep that lighter area lighter. And it'll make this whole area look like it's raised up just slightly. Okay. If you like these lessons and you're on your phone, if you go across the top of my page where my channel and all that information is, there is a spot where it says, what does it say? Does it say more? It says something up there. Anyway, It'll um, let you click it and pop in a small donation if you'd like to do that. Just allows me the finances to go ahead and purchase more books and pencils and different things to keep my channel going. So I am not paid to do any of this. So donations now and again always help. So, all right, and then I'm going to leave that line where his eyes shut. I'm not going to go over that. I think what I'm going to do is come back with black and go over that with black. We're working down the other side now. So just get some of that color in there, the darker areas. That fold in his arm, bottom of the arm, make him look more rounded. I'm still loving this book, y'all. I saw that the artist on this book has illustrated other children's books, 
but I've not found those books in coloring books yet. So if y'all notice any, let me know. I've got, um, I think four. I've got a Christmas one. I've got this one. I've got Wizard of Oz. I've got Peter Rabbit. And that may be it. So I'm really hoping the artist comes out with some more. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I want to pop this leg in front of his body. So I'm going to come in here and do really dark across here. And that'll shove that back some and help pop that leg up a bit. Okay. Now, most of you know, I do not use a lot of black when I'm doing animals, and I especially don't if I'm doing people. I will use different shades of gray, and um, in Crayola, outer space is a good color, and stuff like that, but because I really want some of these areas on the bottom to be super dark. I am going to go into my book and get out a black. And I'm going to do some in black this time. So put that down, go to my book, flip to the back where black is, I believe. Oops, nope, that's not it. Let's come up one page. There it is. So now here's my black. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this eye. Okay. I'm just beefing that up a little bit so it actually looks like his eye is there now. And I'm going to do his nose. I'm going to do some of these darkest areas here. See how just that little bit right in here, I'm just going to work right in this area for a minute. And then when I move my, my hand, we will compare it to the other side and see if you can really tell a difference. Now see I did right here because I want that to look like a fold. Come back down here again. Now, do you see a difference in this and like over here on this? And that a while ago looked pretty good, right? What happens if we come in with just a little bit of black? Just a little bit, just in those creases. See how much more it's really accentuated? Like I said, don't go crazy with it. We don't want to turn our frog black. But I do want, see how that looks. Okay, so from where I'm at, looking at this and this looks a ton different than this. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish off some of this part. Now I'm not going to use as much through here. See, I'm keeping it very sparingly because this part of his body is closer up and therefore it is lighter. There we go, almost finished with this. And then next, we're going to just start tackling the animals on this page. So when we come back next time, um, let's do the little mouse. Okay, and I see this right here didn't get colored. So I'm going to do that. 
then I'm just going to come back in here and beef up this green a little bit. Because remember the first time I went through, I just kind of put some color down. Now I'm really getting the rest of the white, the um, tooth, out of the page. And there we have our froggy friend. So I like him. Oh, I hope you like Mr. Frog. Anyway, that's how I color a frog. So I will see you back here in a few days. Bye.